Good morning, Paul Georgie from Allendale. It's October 22nd, Monday morning, and grain markets are higher here overnight. We've got some uh, stronger markets in uh, China. They were up, uh, soybeans were up 8 to 9 cents there. Uh, some of the reasons for the uh, the strength might be the uh, harvest is winding down. Uh, we're seeing beans go into the bins rather than to the marketplace, and that uh, that's certainly a, a, a positive factor. Also, with the sell-off that we've seen late last week, uh, a lot of this strength could be attributed to uh, short covering. Now we've got uh, a week ahead of us here. We've got option expiration on Friday. There is a large open interest in the November contract, so that's uh, going to be watched closely as we move uh, through the week. We've got weekly export sales coming out on Thursday, and that's going to be watched closely because of the any indication of change in demand. And then, of course, uh, harvest progress this afternoon. The uh, EU did announce late on Friday that they will now allow imports of uh, Brazilian GMO corn. So that could have a, an adjustment there in, as far as uh, demand uh, that uh, Europe has and could have an impact on uh, wheat usage and so forth. Uh, there also was a comment over the weekend that uh, Russia's uh, ag minister had said that he opposes any uh, export ban on uh, grains and wheat. Uh, so we'll see how far that goes. Um, the uh, Reuters had news stories uh, also over the weekend with an interview of a, a seed company uh, in uh, Brazil and in uh, South America, Argentina as well. They're saying that their soybean sales are up 12% uh, so far this year, and uh, they're projecting a record crop of 80 million metric tons coming out of Brazil and uh, 53 to 56 million tons out of Argentina. The uh, uh, fund uh, CFTC report on uh, Friday afternoon showed that we had more liquidation by funds uh, last week, 35,000 in the five major uh, grain categories of uh, reducing long positions, so and the market stayed stable. So there's a, there's a balancing going on in the uh, in the marketplace right now, and we expect that uh, strength will probably be met with some resistance here in the trading range. Uh, however, the uh, the tight uh, supply of cash will continue to to strengthen basis, and it's and demand is going to be a, a key to. Uh, opening up these grain bins that uh, producers have basically locked until the uh, the first of the year as uh, harvest is complete. So uh, there will be some uh, uh, some tug of war going on there, and uh, the grains in in a very uh, uh, choppy time, I would suspect, over the next several months. In the livestock trade, we had cash cattle on Friday trade at two dollars higher, up to one twenty seven to one twenty eight in the. Uh, uh, Kansas, Texas area. Uh, the product on Friday was down slightly, 13 cents in choice, 43 cents in select. Uh, pork cutout values were up 126. But the big news on Friday afternoon was the cattle on feed report. We had 97% uh, cattle on feed, 81% placed, and marketed at 88. The, uh, the big number that was watched there is an indication for grain demand and what the attitude of the cattle feeder was is the uh, placement number and the, the placement number was 18.8 percent below uh, a year ago and uh, well below what the trade was expecting placements to be. We fell below the 100 percent level on uh, cattle on feed and uh, marketings were a little bit light on the light side but uh, it should have, uh, as the market opens this morning, we should see some uh, some bullish reactions from it. It certainly was a friendly report, but uh, spreads might be the uh, the biggest uh, adjustment here today. So if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call here at Allendale at 800-262-7538. We wish everybody a very successful trading day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow morning.